kitchen knives slip, passing comets bring lawn mowers to murderous life, hands turned evil and must be chainsawed off. You know, shit happens. And we all know that the proper course of action in such a circumstance is to stop the bleeding, clean the wound, and toss the recently separated body part on a bed device like shrimp at an alucanid seafood buffet. But that's not always the best solution when Seattleite Jim Beatty tablesawed the tip clean off his finger while doing home renovations in 2010, he and his wife tossed it in a Tupperware container and covered it with ice. When they arrived at the emergency room, they discovered how bad an idea that was. Especially in cases involving small body parts, such as fingers and toes, direct contact with ice rapidly causes freezer burn and damages tissue beyond repair. Instead, they should have wrapped the finger in a clean, damp cloth and kept it cold, not frozen. Basically, treat your severed body parts less like hot pockets and more like a fine steak, and you might get to keep that hand. According to classic Western movie wisdom, the steps to treat a bite from a venomous snake are one tie a tourniquet above the bite to prevent the poison from making its way into to the rest of your body, two hack into to the bite, probably using the same knife you employed to kill the bastard snake, and three suck out the poison. If you can't manage to reach the site of the wound with your own mouth, a companion's mouth will do. This is what old-timey cowboys referred to as bonding. And that is a great list of things you absolutely should not do in the event of a snake bite. While tying off a tourniquet seems like a no-brainer, keeping all the venom trapped in one area only serves to cause necrosis, meaning that the venom effectively kills whatever part of the body you trapped it in, thereby leaving doctors no choice but to give it the old civil war chop. Cutting the wound only serves to introduce more damaged tissue for the venom to interact with, and increases the chance of infection and sucking on the wound is, let's face it, just plain gross. And also completely pointless. What you should actually do is remain calm getting your heart rate up will only serve to spread the venom faster, not drink caffeine or alcohol the latter of which, of course, flies directly in the face of the remain calm bit, remove any jewelry and tight clothing before you do a terrible Michelin man impersonation, and, most importantly, get your snake bit and ask to a doctor for a nice fat dose of antivenin. No tying of ropes, cutting, or sucking at all. That makes for a boring Friday night, but it is how you survive a snake bite. For more ways we're likely destroying ourselves, check out 5 well-known tips for healthy eating that don't work and 6 well-known health tips that don't work at all. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out FCK Floss 3 thankfully debunked health myths, and other videos you want see on the site. Follow us on Facebook, and we'll follow you everywhere. Get intimate with our new podcast Crack Gets Personal. Subscribe for great episodes like the most insane things we saw in emergency medicine and three wild stories from inside the opiate epidemic, available wherever you get your podcasts.